Hi Floss Tube, it's Karen, Recovering Monogamous Stitcher. I'm back with video number 19. Uh, it is Friday, May 12, 2023. Uh, thank you so much to those of you who have come back so regularly and make comments on my videos. I so, so appreciate it. I, I really love my stitching community. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope you see something you enjoy. I would love to know how you found out about my channel, whether it popped up on your feed or if you heard someone shout me out, because I would like to thank anyone who shouts me out, of course. Um, and I hope you will uh, subscribe. I'm approaching 3,000 subscribers and I'm planning a giveaway um, when I get to 3,000. So if you've been watching and you just haven't subscribed, jump in and subscribe. Let, let's push this up to 3,000 and above and uh, we'll have a fun giveaway. Uh, okay, so comments from last time. Uh, one very helpful, well, there were several helpful comments about um, finding my mistake in the Red Deer Sampler. Several of you mentioned uh, taking a picture with your, uh, with the camera or, or iPad and then look at the picture and that the mistake might become more evident that way. I haven't spent time doing that yet, but when I get back to Red Birds, uh, Red Bird, Red Deer, I'm going to do that. I think that's, that's a great, um, helpful suggestion. Uh, another um, viewer, Jeannie, I think it's Jeannie, maybe it's Jean, J-E-A-N-N-E, -E, uh, notified me that everything crossstitch.com has all of its flosses on sale through the month of May. Um, and I had already finished kitting up what I was going to kit up, but if you're kitting something up, you may as well get your floss on sale. Go on over there and check it out. Um, you know, every little savings helps. Uh, but right now, I think I'm set for now. Uh, so anyway, I hope that uh, that's a good suggestion for you. Let's get on to the cross stitch. We'll start with the cross stitch. And then at the end, I'll talk about the quilt that's behind me. Um, and I have um, some things. Anyway, uh, a little long armor trick I'm going to show you when we talk about that. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my whips, um, my book of days here. Uh, my last floss tube was April 26th, um, and so I had a cut, not 26th, it was not, it was the 28th. So there were a couple of days left in April, and I had just finished off um, spending week, my weeks on my plan, and I had two days left, and I got to forget me not which is supposed to have five days in a month, but with the transitioning from Florida back to Kentucky, I lost some stitching days and, and this one ran short. So the first whip I'm gonna share with you is Forget Me Not. I'm using the Forget Me Not pattern from Modern Folk Embroidery. And I'm, I'm doing uh, Katie Strachan's plan. She made a, on a wooden box her Simple Harmony plan. And I'm doing this as a forget-me-not plan. And um, so let me show you what I've done. This represents some more days of stitching. This is uh, the cover of the box. And then there, it will extend down the side of the box each way. Um, so I've got the two big whoops, main, um, what do you call it? They're not motifs. What are they? In Quaker, what do you call those? Whatever they are. Uh, and then I've started this one over here on this side. Now, if you look at, this I, this was interesting and clever on Katie's part. She came up with this all on her own. So in this pattern, uh, am I looking at the right side? It's backwards to me. These two motifs end at this straight border. But on the cover of the box, the motifs are going to spill over the side. So from that pattern, you have to mirror to put more of the design so that when it folds over the top of the box, you have the continued motif. Motif, that's the word I was trying to think of. So anyway, um, I owe more days from April, but I'll, I'll be giving this five days this week, this month. So I have I owe it five full days, and I will get to that in my plans. This is Forget Me Not. And the big one, if you follow me on Instagram, you saw my progress on this one. Of course, this is Jane Hopkins, 1875, from Hands Across the Sea Samplers. Love this beautiful Jane. 
We love her. Now, let me see if I can uh, have an expression on my face that um, I won't be ashamed of when, <laughs> when YouTube chooses it as my thumbnail. <laughs> I always have a weird expression. Okay, I got really far on this, I think. I had, I got that whole rose done and started the next leaf over. I think I had kind of been in these leaves down here. That is a heck of a lot of color changes um, and pretty intense, you know, counting and changing and making sure everything lines up. I shouldn't say it out loud, shouldn't put it out to the universe, but I think I'm on track here. I don't think I've blubbed anything. So knock on wood, I hope that continues. Love Miss Jane, I give her uh, one week in each month. Um, this was my New Year's Day start, and I am participating in the Hats First Week of the Month Sal uh, with uh, Laura Duet and, and many other floss tubers who are doing this, and, I, and I'm loving it. It fits doing the first week of the month on a sampler really works for my overall year, yearly plan because this is my year to finish samplers. Oh, oh, and I just threw a bunch of things on the floor that I had all set up. Great. Okay, that was Jane Hopkins. Okay, I also did uh, secret small stitching um, because I'm going to StitchCon Weekend A and there is a smalls exchange. I have stitched my small that I plan to exchange. I'm going to stitch it again for myself, so you'll see it then when I do that. Um, it was really hard to decide what to do because you have no idea what someone might like and who will get what, and you know, I want someone to be happy with what it is, so it was hard to think of something that was kind of generic that any stitcher might like. So anyway, we'll talk about that uh, another time. Um, the next thing I stitched on is my new focus piece. Uh, those of you who are new here, um, I will tell you that in my stitching plan, I always have my oldest whip as my focus piece. I give it seven days in a month of stitching, and it remains my focus piece until it is finished. Last month, I finished Halloween Quaker by uh, Leela Studio. And so this month, I'm starting on my next oldest whip, and it happens to be Baby It's Cold Outside from Heartstring Samplery. I stitched this as um, Leanne's Legacy. I started it on August 24th, uh, and it had a very poor little start to it. I don't think I had much stitching time that day. I had done some of the, a little bit of the border with just the green, and now I've completed the border, filled in the red stitches in the border, and established that baseline and started on the house. So I have a pretty good start. Now, that was just a day. Actually, it was part of a day because I finished my small in the morning and then in the afternoon I stitched on this. So um, it will get a total of seven days. So I'll be stitching on this again and you will see more progress on that. And it will remain my focus until it is finished. At first I thought maybe I should just save that for Leanne's Legacy. And I thought, no, I want to get my oldest whip done, so I'll do that and choose something else for Leanne's Legacy next August. Okay, and that's it for the stitching that I've done since last time. Um, but I have a ton of haul. You'll recall that um, when I get in Florida, when I get close to time to leave, I have to stop ordering because I don't want anything to be lost in transition. So. So there was a dead zone that I got into, and then there were some things I wanted that were in stock, and I thought, oh, I hope they're still in stock when I get to Kentucky so I can order, and they were. So uh, so I, I have quite a pile of stuff that came in. We'll get to that. Um, I have finished kitting up Eliza's French Birds by JBW Designs. Beautiful little thing. Um, I was searching around for the, well, I was trying to kit up two different things and I ended up having to get flosses from three different places to get all of them, but I, but I got them all. Okay, so I've got, let me see if I can hold this in a nice way here. Probably not. Okay. 
Oops, okay, there are the overdyed threads. And I have the two DMCs. I showed those last time. Last time, that was my only haul, two DMCs. So I have this entirely kitted up. Um, I hope to get a chance to get it started soon. Maybe at StitchCon, although I don't know what I'm going to do for my um, magnification when I'm there. Um, I'm looking at the things I dropped on the floor. I have to get those in a minute. Okay, and then the other, okay, moving on. <laughs> Squirrel, Karen's distracted. Um, okay, the other one I was trying to kit up was Let No Net Ensnare Me from 1897 Schoolhouse Samplers. Beautiful, beautiful bird as the centerpiece. And again, this was, I had to get threads from three different places to, to accomplish my kitting up. So the fabric I've chosen is Fiber on a Whim, 36 count linen cappuccino. I could be suede because this is kind of a creamier look, but the, the fabric called for for this was called cappuccino. And it, I don't think it was Fiber on a Whim, but this is cappuccino. It looks different. So I might still switch off. With that and then I have my over dies oh my goodness and they're all just loose I didn't have another ring look at those colors aren't they pretty look at the teal there oh beautiful and then I have uh, also got mountain mist and what is the other one in here oh grasshopper grasshopper and mountain mist I had to get another place so that is now all kitted up and when I vacillating on the fabric. I'll be ready to start that, I guess. Okay. That'll go in the kitted up basket. Okay, I've got to get these. Oh, okay. There. Okay, so some more um, haul that I got. If you recall, last time um, two of my friends um, Kim and Angela let me know that the equality sampler, I had originally said I was going to do a stitch on Ada and they saved me from myself until it said no, that has one over one stitching on it. So I've selected Grog from Be Stitch Me linen. And this is the leftover piece that I used when I stitched my Redbird sampler from Brenda Gervais. So this is for the equality sampler. Plum Street and there is one over one those words are one over one and then as I was ordering and getting things kitted up ordering uh, floss I remembered that a new constellation is I in my mind it's like a companion piece those two go together and I have always wanted that so I ordered that pattern along with flosses again Plum Street beautiful again a lot of one over one I have I have all DMC's for this one and the fabric I chose is uh, 36 count legacy So I have a linen. I won't be caught not being able to do my one over one. So those are kitted. And then in, in buying um, a variety of linens, okay, I'm gonna do this in a different order than I had originally planned. I've been looking for some lights. My stash just didn't have lights. I had lots of darks and I wanted to choose, I, I had need of lights. I've had this pattern, blue flower, strawberry bird, um, lacking the, the uh, fabric because I just didn't have a color and I never thought of just ordering specifically to get it going. So since I was ordering a variety of fabrics, I got one that I think is great. It is platinum. So this is now ready. I have all of the DMCs and finally have the fabric and I can get going on that one too. 
So another one kitted up. Okay, and I showed you the, the pretty, pretty pretties. Whoops, here. One, of, one is an Ada, but the rest are linens. It'll give me some nice choices when I'm trying to kit up. Um, another thing, as, I'm paw as I was pawing through thinking, like, what, what do I need to kit up? I came across Jack-O-Lantern Jubilee. Again, Brenda Gervais with Thin Needle and Thread. And in pawing through my drawer, uh, I have all kinds of leftover small pieces. And I thought, why am I saving these small pieces if I'm not going to use them on something like, exactly like these small pillows? So that's what I'm going to do. They won't all match, I don't care. Um, they'll just, they'll all go together. Um, and I'll get going on that, that booklet, get all those little ornaments done, Halloween. So, again, so now that one's uh, kitted up. Ready to go. There's a theme, right? Kitted up, ready to go. Just, I need more time. Okay, and that's not all. Because as I was getting the fabrics, I would put in a pattern that is on my wish list. I got George and Martha from Plum Street. One. Okay, so I have the pattern. Haven't kitted it. Had no intention of kitting it. I just wanted to get the pattern so I could get going on it. And uh, last time I showed you the Stacy Nash Velvet Parsnip Needle Book and said, I don't know where I'm going to be able to source those things that I need to finish that. So I ordered from Country Sampler the kit. And so now I have the pattern that I had purchased before, and that'll be part of my 3,000 giveaway. So I'm, I have the whole kit on this. Yay. Yay. Love getting a kit. Okay, another thing I was worried about not being in stock, when I talked about the needles, um, Bird Brain Designs, Bird Brain, has the pattern for this large tomato. I showed this several times ago. I know I was in Florida when I showed that. So, and I got the wool needed for it. It was on her site and she still had it when I got back, so I ordered it. And I was very rude and did not save it before, you know, show it on floss tube before I used it. I used it, I wanted to get going on it. So, I sewed the tomato but I didn't have the needle. Well, now I have the needle, so I will continue going. But this is the size of the tomato. Pretty nice, huh? Not as big as Brenda's, but if I had access to a big old piece of uh, wool, I would increase it on my copier like um, Sherry, Colorado Cross Stitcher did, and do a really big one. So, okay, so there's that. Okay, another that I was hoping would still be in stock is Pennsylvania Dutch Tomato Pinky from Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. I was able to get it from her site. It's a kit and it came with the wooden stand. Of course, I'll have to paint it. But yay, another kit. Love it, love it, love it. And then following on the tomato theme, since I was ordering from her, I thought, you know, posted just the same, let's get some pattern, so I got I Collect, and then another tomato theme, Queen of the Needle. So I'll be adding these to um, my bag that has the other tomato patterns in it. Hope to get a nice themed group going there. Yay! That was Ton O Hall, and I hardly ever get that much stuff, but I had been waiting and waiting to get caught up on that. Okay, so I told you I was digging through my mom's um, sewing stuff to, and, because I knew she had long needles. Okay, went through that story. Now, I came across some interesting things. One thing, she crocheted 
She was a crocheter. She made this little strawberry uh, pinky pin cushion, I guess. And I kept it just exactly the way it was, uh, with the thread on it, the pins in it. That's exactly the way it came out of her sewing box. Cute. So those of you who crochet, there's an idea for you. Do a sweet little strawberry. Isn't that cute? Found a couple of her thimbles. Haven't seen those for a while, so I've got a couple of mom's thimbles. This cute little um, pin cushion that goes on your finger. So when you're doing stuff, you don't have to reach. It's just handy there for pin. I don't think she made this. I think someone gave this to her because that just does not look like her style. I don't know. Just my guess. And then I came across a project that I cannot figure out what it is. She was making yo-yos, but the cardboard is left in. And there are some that she has started to stitch together with the cardboard still in. And there was one in that little pouch that has a button in the center. And there's a set of buttons. There are a bunch more green buttons in there. And then there are some red buttons that are strung together. So, and I can't figure out what in the world she would be making with yo-yos because it appears like this is finished. Since it has a button on it, I assume she was finished. But what do you make with the cardboard still in it? Certainly couldn't be a quilt. I don't know. Anyway, have you ever seen anything like that? What do they make that into? I don't know. Anyway, just a mystery out of my mom's sewing box. I would like to know. Okay, did I do all the stuff I wanted? Yes, I did. Okay. Okay, so <clears throat> that's my ton of haul. My plans. Um, I will continue working on my focus piece because it needs seven full days and it's had only one. I will work on the forget-me-not. That'll get five days. Uh, my red sampler, um, which is uh, Maria Vincenza Laricchia, and that will get three days. And I need to do some finishing. I have um, things I brought back from Florida, the, um, the little potential pillows from uh, the snowball booklet from Brenda Gervais. They're all ready to be finished. I went through my stash and found some fabric for backing. It's white on white with snowflakes and I think that'll work just fine. Um, I have my um, Elizabeth Isles piece that I finished stitching that I want to make into a drum. That's ready and waiting. And I want to get my tomato finished and all kinds of things. All the things. I want them all done. So that's my plans. And I'll be back in two weeks with another floss tube. Um, if you're sticking around to hear about the quilt, um, hang on. And um, if you're done and you're just here for cross stitch, I'll see you in a couple weeks and see you next time. Bye-bye. Okay, the quilt behind me, you may recognize, is the pattern called Swoon. Um, it's by Camille Ross Kelly. I made this quilt, I sewed this quilt in 2013 and 2014, and I quilted it on my long arm in 2015. It finishes 80 by 80. This is her original pattern that came out is 24 inch blocks. I believe they're 24, yeah. Yeah, they're 24 inch blocks. And then she has come out since with some smaller versions. It's 18 inch or something, which visually is very pleasing. Um, I would like that. but. I'm satisfied with the, with the swoon quilt I made. I have no desire to make another swoon quilt. Um, I wish I could go back and do the quilting differently because I would do a lot of fancier quilting in it than I did. I was relatively new again at my long arm at that time, so I had a very simple quilting pattern. Now I'm going to have an awkward transition while I take the camera off the tripod and then move you back to the quilt so you can see it. Sorry. So this is Swoon. Um, most of these fabrics are um, Denise Schmidt. In fact, maybe all of them. No, they're not. I see at least one that came from my stash. Um, I don't remember the name. I, they could be, even be from several different lines that she put out. 
Um, but I really like her aesthetic. Bright colors. Daughter has claimed this. So don't tell me you, I can adopt you so that you can take my quilt. <laughs> this one has been claimed. Um, you can see that I my quilting was Baptist fan. You can see the, or some people call it clamshell, but it, it's like circle, circle, and then circle, circle, circle. And when I finish giving you an overview here, I'll show you how I do that. So it's three by three, nine big blocks, and that makes an 80 by 80 quilt. Okay, now lest you think that I just freehand moved this. No, I didn't. I had a tool to help me with that. Now let me see if I can hold this without putting my big fat hand in front of it. No, I can't. Okay. Let me hold it up here. It's a, oops, so steady. Circle Sun Quilts long arm template. It has a pin that you put behind the quilt and then a template, just a minute here. Sorry, awkward time, awkward time. So you put the template on the pin. You see these holes? No, because I'm not showing you. Let me see what I'm showing. Okay, there are holes and you decide what, what um, circumference you want your circle. And the hopping foot and needle go in this and then it pivots on that pin and then you move it to the next pin down and then you do it again and the next pin down and do it again. So that's that's how that works. So don't think I'm just really, really able to be perfect with my quilting. So that's Swoon and the quilting pattern is called Baptist Fan. Completed in 2015. Okay. And that's it. So that's another floss tube. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks, floss tube. Bye bye.